Okay, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. I am very excited to, uh, uh, this is my first time at the Open Source Summit Europe. Um, so very keen to share the good word of open source and financial services with you folks. Um, wish me luck. This is a live session. Uh, so please, if you can drop your questions in chat and I will uh, try to leave some time at the end to cover them. So um, what we'd like to uh, start with, it's, it's an introduction. My name is Gabriele Golumbro. I'm the executive director of FINOS, the FinTech Open Source Foundation. Um, we are the uh, Open Source Foundation fostering uh, open source collaboration in a pretty siloed industry like financial services. So today I'd like to uh, uh, share with you where we got, where we're coming from, where are we going, and why we're seeing so much momentum uh, in open source and financial services. But before we get started, uh, this is our, uh, uh, I want to send a shout out to our members and thank them for the continuous support that they've been giving to Finos. As you can see, we have the luck of uh, having a pretty broad community of uh, banks, uh, technology companies, uh, and several fintechs and, and open source uh, smaller uh, firms who are really helping us grow in this community. Uh, I also want to take an opportunity to send a shout out to Suze, who has John, just joined Finos as a gold member, uh, and also to AIR, the Alliance for Innovative Regulation and Interwork Alliance, who have become our first two associate members in Finos. So uh, a support that continues growing, uh, not only in terms of corporate members, but also in terms of uh, associate members that help us expand our footprint in the industry and beyond. So before we get started, uh, uh, our charter, as I said, is to create a global community collaborating on open source, open standards, open services and APIs, and open policies that really drive a mutualization in this industry. Uh, this is a word that you hear a lot from me today, but it's certainly some one of the most compelling reasons why large firms like banks and, you know, as you're more familiar, technology companies really leverage open source. Uh, but this is really a means to an end. Our goal is to drive faster innovation in an industry that really needs it. Um, financial services, as you probably are familiar with, or maybe you're not, but it certainly has some amazing technology, but there's also a huge amount of legacy technology. And so uh, that's what we're chartered to. Um, of course, the initial reaction when someone hears, uh, especially a couple of years ago, uh, open source and financial services, um, you know, is a little doubtful. I, uh, uh, in my 20 years in open source communities, it certainly has been, you know, one of the industries that has been a little bit more lagging when it comes to uh, uh, adopting, not just adopting open source, there is certainly a pretty broad adoption already for quite a few years, uh, but certainly when it comes to contributing and really strategically using open source as a way to, again, reduce cost, foster innovation, and really solving problems that are beyond uh, uh, the scope of each individual constituent in this very, very, uh, you know, important ecosystem. And so, you know, the good news today is that actually uh, open source has become, has seen a massive growth in the last two years uh, um, in the industry. Uh, and again, it's been the end of a, uh, or the culmination, better said, of a process that has been going on uh, now for several years. Um, and to be, to be clear, this is not just about press and the articles that you see out there. What I hope I'll be able to share with you today is that we are talking about active contributions and really large institutions taking the plunge into open source collaboration, something that I think, again, was long overdue uh, as we've seen many industries moving to open source collaboration over the last two decades. 
Um, in fact, uh, hot of the presses, last week we just announced a major contribution. Um, Goldman Sachs, one of our platinum members, has been working with us and with the community for now about a year uh, to open source their legend logical modeling platform. This is a pretty big deal for us. I hope you'll find it interesting. Um, this is years and years of intellectual property that got contributed uh, by Goldman Sachs to our community, uh, not only to, of course, mutualize the development of a pretty, again, powerful uh, data platform and underlying language, programming language, but also to really enable the industry to collaborate on common data models. Um, again, when you, you're looking uh, at collaborating in an industry that has been largely siloed, uh, starting from data, from standards, from common models, uh, uh, is a great place to start. And so I'm really excited to see not only uh, you can check out the code uh, at github.com slash venus slash legend. Um, you can learn more. We have a whole documentation site that you can check out. Uh, but also, we are, as Finos, hosting an instance for legend. And so if you go to finos.org slash legend, you're actually being able to try it yourself. Um, you learn, hopefully, throughout this presentation how that is very important to enable uh, easy evaluation of open source software that then hopefully gets adopted and contributed to by a wider and wider uh, community. Um, so this is not just about legend. Uh, uh, as I said, over the last few years, we have created a pretty lively landscape. And, you know, I would love to take full credit that this is just because of Finos and the really relentless work we've been trying to do over the last over the short four years of our existence. Uh, but the truth is that uh, uh, there are several factors that are playing into this growth uh, of what we call the open fintech landscape. Um, and these are the reasons that hopefully I'll be able to share with you throughout this presentation. Uh, but in the meanwhile, uh, check out landscape.finos.org, uh, have a look at the over 40 incubating and active projects that we host. Uh, I will sh be sharing with you some of those later in the presentation, but uh, uh, feel free to, you know, if you're familiar with other foundations, you should be familiar with the landscape. Uh, we are uh, definitely uh, uh, trying to leverage existing tools from the Linux Foundation to, again, ensure that all of you familiar uh, with this construct can navigate and browse and learn uh, about our project. So please check out landscape.finos.org and just know that this is a community-driven effort. So of course, we're welcome to have your contributions uh, on this GitHub repository. And so you don't have to trust me <laughs> to uh, know that open source is on the rise in financial services. Of course, I've shared a couple of examples, but I would like today to walk you through why open source is becoming so popular in financial services. And by open source, I mean open source contribution and collaboration, not just consumption. How uh, we in Finos have helped grow this ecosystem and what do we provide to our community uh, to enable uh, uh, um, this type of uh, acceleration and this type of uh, 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 really, again, safe space for the industry to collaborate in the open. And finally, what projects uh, you can get involved today, as we, of course, hope that this will be a new area for you to contribute on. Again, a very nascent community, which we think presents a huge opportunity, whether you are representing your company or whether you are contributing as an individual. So let's start with why. Why are these large financial institutions who've been for several decades, if not centuries, working in a very siloed 
conservative approach, how how is it that they are now looking, uh, not just looking, but they are actively contributing? I mean, Finance this year received over 60% of its contributions from banks, which is actually pretty unprecedented. Um, and so let's let's have a look at what are the reasons that we think have drawn such a uh, acceleration of open source engagement in this industry. Well, look, the first and foremost uh, is, you know, when you talk about uh, corporate engagement, um, you always have to look at what are the business drivers that are uh, making uh, an industry more comfortable with taking additional risk. Um, and this is, I want to be clear, something that was very clear already prior to you know, this very particular year and the acceleration that we've seen in, in uh, so many uh, elements of digital engagement, distributed workforces. But the truth is that in Wall Street and beyond, uh, when you look at the financial services uh, industry uh, and investment banking, um, you know, the trading income, if you look at the top line starting 2008, 2009, has plunged about 40 billions uh, over the last 10 years. This would be, just to give you an example, almost as if JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs would you know, suddenly disappear. Uh, so the top line and the revenue is not where it used to be 10 years ago. Um, and if you pair that with the fact that the bottom line uh, you know, has shown massive increases in regulatory costs, following, of course, the 2008-2009 crisis and, you know, the regulatory context that happened afterwards, um, you know, we're looking at margins that are much thinner than they used to be 10 years ago. So if you, you know, expand that, uh, uh, it's pretty straightforward to understand that there's just simply not enough money to continue throwing, uh, again, huge amount of money to any type of technology problem. And so that really is forcing this industry into more and more uh, efficiency, more and more, uh, uh, you know, a much more purposeful uh, technology strategy. And, you know, open source, as, you know, I think we all know, having lived and breathed and grown in an open source community, um, we... Uh, uh, know that that can deliver uh, all this good stuff, efficiency, mutualization, reduction of cost, reduction of total cost of ownership of your technology. And so this is, I think, the first fundamental reason why uh, uh, this industry has been looking at open source in a much more serious way. The second uh, reason is... uh, you know, the financial ecosystem, the financial technology ecosystem has drastically changed over the last few years. Um, Now, everyone is familiar, I think, differently than maybe five or 10 years ago with the word fintech. Um, You know, we have over the last 10 years had a massive rise on investment in uh, financial technology startups who are really starting to sort of bring that, uh, uh, you know, customer-centric and that sort of agile approach uh, to, again, an industry that was largely dominated by incumbents, both from a vendor standpoint and uh, financial institutions. Uh, This is really pushing the envelope when it comes to the, ultimately, the customer experience that these large financial institutions have to deliver. Uh, And in a way is sort of chipping Uh, at the business, chipping at the very way uh, uh, these institutions have been doing business for for decades. Um, If you go even further and you look at, you know, the decentralized ecosystem movement, uh, uh, you know, blockchain technologies, distributed ledger technologies, again, there are technological innovations that are fundamentally challenging uh, the role in the industry and the position that some of these uh, very large financial institutions have. And so, you know, the bottom line is that uh, uh, this ecosystem is moving more and more to become an open ecosystem. 
as opposed to a very close, very siloed ecosystem where elements like interoperability, elements like uh, uh, you know streamlined workflows across the the you know end to end streamlined workflows, where ultimately the you know uh, uh, mobile native and digital sort of native experience that uh, the audience is looking for is again pushing further and further these institutions to innovate. So uh, again, need for efficiency, need for innovation. And finally, uh, again, this is uh, personally a word that I don't love, the digital transformation. Uh, it can be uh, pretty, pretty uh, uh, opaque at times, uh, but it is true that every financial institution to a different extent, it either is a technology company or is looking to become a technology company. Um, and one of the common sort of journeys that the whole industry is going through is the move to cloud. Um, you know, in a regulated industry, uh, uh, A, you have probably the most complexity to move your workloads to cloud, uh, you know, having to take care of uh, several regulatory constraints, but also on the flip side, uh, again, that means that we are still uh, uh, sort of a little bit earlier in the days when it comes to the whole industry migrating to cloud. And so uh, these major sort of uh, uh, shifts that are happening in this technology, in the technology organizations within financial institutions, uh, uh, you know, with the line being more and more blurred between what is a bank and what is, uh, you know, a technology company uh, that is really pushing, uh, uh, again, A, the banks to innovate faster, B, is bringing talent that is typically, uh, you know, that you find typically in uh, uh, technology companies, uh, more in position of leadership in these institutions. And so you're seeing actually a very strong push to take more risk, uh, uh, of course, in a controlled way, but uh, to really, uh, uh, you know, further innovation ahead of, again, a very conservative uh, industry that has been for decades. So if you pair these three uh, major drivers, uh, then you see why Finos was created and why we are really trying to bring everyone to the table. This is not just about financial institutions. This is about technology vendors, whether you are a fintech vendor or you are, you know, a quote unquote big tech vendor or an open source vendor. There is a massive opportunity here in terms of uh, um, really creating a commercial open source ecosystem uh, in financial services, something that we have seen play out in so many other industries, you know, becoming the open source alternative for a specific solution, for a specific use case in the industry. Um, but regulators are another big piece of the puzzle. Um, we'll talk about in this presentation later on uh, about our open reg tech initiative. Um, we think that you know, in the constant battle between regulation and deregulation, open source can actually provide an anchor, can actually provide a common ground to make regulatory implementation, interpretation and enforcement way more efficient. Um, just put a pin on that. We'll talk a lot more about that later in the presentation. And finally, individual contributors. We are like any open source community, ultimately made of individuals whether you're working for any of those uh, entities that I previously mentioned, whether you are an individual contributor looking to grow your portfolio, this is a very sought after industry. This is a very you know, undeniably wealthy industry that can uh, definitely reward uh, uh, you know, great talent and that it, it is in seek of talent. Uh, and so we think that there is a huge opportunity here for experienced open source contributors to join our community, uh, become a mentor, become a leader, become a champion for this movement. And, you know, this is not just about cost savings and efficiency. Uh, we talked about it. Um, you know, as I said, there is a huge search for talent, uh, but we think 
again, we, it is not lost on us that we represent some of the largest financial institutions in the world. And so, uh, as you hopefully will learn today, after years of creating the community and getting to you know, the momentum that we are experiencing right now, we know that we have the chance in the future to look sort of to solve higher order challenges, um, you know, uh, sustainability, uh, financial inclusion, uh, diversity, which is a huge problem in the industry as much as it is still in open source communities. And so uh, we think this is a, a, a unique opportunity, whether you are, again, a financial institution, a fintech vendor, a regulator, or an individual open source contributor. Um, so we talked about the why. Um, the next step is how are we doing that? Um, you know, I'll be honest, uh, five years ago when uh, we were pitching open source collaboration to several of these institutions, um, you know, we had, we had pretty mild reactions. Um, you know, not to say that they were calling me a hippie. Um, but, you know, we learned in open source communities that leading by example uh, is the most powerful way of uh, educating and teaching and, and really creating uh, energy momentum around the vision. And so let me share with you a little bit, uh, you know, what we think Finos uh, does differently to have enabled this uh, uh, active open source collaboration in the industry. Um, I'm not going to go through this uh, slide in detail, um, but this is a brief history of us. Um, if you're not familiar, we used to be called the Symphony Software Foundation. Uh, we collaborated under that brand for a couple of years, from 2015 to uh, uh, early 2018. Um, but in 2017, when we also launched our the first conference in financial services called the Open Source Strategy Forum, we realized uh, that there was a much broader opportunity than collaborating just around the Symphony software, um, Symphony being one of our members as well. Um, we realized that, again, the industry was ready for collaborating to have a home, a foundation that could help this industry uh, collaborate in the open. And so that's where in 2018, uh, we launched Finos, and since then, we uh, have seen major growth in the community, uh, not only with financial institutions, but also tech vendor and open source vendor joining us, and culminating this year with, uh, uh, again, over 60% of our contributions coming from banks. And uh, we'll quickly talk about it later. This has also culminated with Finos joining the Linux Foundation. Uh, in the spirit of cross-pollinating our communities, uh, uh, we thought that there was a huge potential for us to uh, join uh, uh, such a strong uh, uh, brand and a strong operations like the Linux Foundation. We are already seeing the benefits, including me being here and being able to share uh, this with you. Um, in fact, this quarter has been our busiest quarter ever. Um, we have approved four new incubating projects, Glue from EPAM, Morphir from Morgan Stanley, uh, the Symphony Java Toolkit from Deutsche Bank, and uh, the aforementioned legend from Goldman Sachs. Um, it's not only that, we continue uh, uh, you know, promoting open source and keeping open source in the industry news. This is something that, again, as a vertical financial services focus foundation, remains very important for us. Um, and of course, we continue offering uh, several channels for our projects and for our message to continue going out. So it's been a really exciting 2020, despite being a very turbulent year. And, and certainly we think that the digital acceleration provided, uh, again, as a silver lining, if you want, of this pandemic has certainly helped, uh, uh, again, financial institutions being more and more comfortable with contributing in the open. But so back to the how. Um, how do we do this? And, you know, 
if you join Finas, not just as a member, but also as a contributor, what can you expect in terms of help, uh, uh, you know, growing your project or helping your organization participate further to open source? Um, there's really, I think, three pillars that I want to touch with you. Um, our governance, uh, transparent governance, um, again, something relatively novel, uh, uh, said probably obvious for many of you as open source contributors, uh, but pretty novel uh, in an industry that, again, has been very conservative and private in nature. Uh, our open source readiness project uh, and our open developer platform. These are really the three main enablers. Um, you know, when you think about a regulated industry collaborating in the open, there are some very specific uh, um, challenges that we think Thanos help address and solve and make, again, these firms comfortable to collaborate in the open. Uh, first and foremost, our governance. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. As you probably can see, it's a pretty common governance with a, board, a governing board that oversees uh, our open standard projects and open source projects. Uh, but again, the reason I'm calling it out is that we do everything transparently. Uh, you know, I come from from Apache as a as a uh, uh, education in open source, if you want. And so, if it doesn't happen in the list, it didn't happen. Um, so we make sure that all of our uh, meetings and all of our uh, uh, decision making is publicly. Uh, uh, tracked and you know that really provides again from an open source standpoint the trust that is needed to develop such a community but from a regulatory standpoint i would like you to understand that this way we do provide a proven to be successful collaboration model that can stand that is actually regulatory compliant that actually allows the folks you know, through our antitrust policy, through our conflict of interest policy, to feel comfortable to talk with each other. Um, I think that sometimes um, these issues are lost on individual contributors, especially when you're talking about a, a, a regulated industry. Uh, and together with, you know, transparency in decision making, we are big proponents of transparency in our metrics. So if you're interested, you can go to metrics.finos.org and uh, uh, you know, check out who's contributing. Um, you know, of course, this is not just for sort of accountability, but it's also for us to continue growing the community. And in fact, uh, you know, we have I'm happy to report that in October, we've had the largest amount of commits and pull requests and generally activity in our community. So this is a very exciting time for us in the community. And if you go and check out our metrics, you'll find out that you know six out of six of the largest investment banks are actually actively contributing code. And again, this is, I think, pretty unprecedented if you look uh, at even just two years ago. Um, in addition to our governance, uh, it was a very early realization for us that, uh, you know, even two or three years ago, several developers in financial institutions, someone sitting at JP Morgan, someone sitting at Morgan Stanley, someone sitting at, you know, in their offices at Goldman Sachs, um, you know, they might not even have access to some of the best of breed developer tools that we're all used to, you know, whether that's GitHub, you know, the Atlassian suite, uh, um, you know, even uh, single sign-on. Um, there's an inherent complexity when you're trying to bring uh, uh, regulated developers uh, to collaborate in the open that, again, it creates an unnecess unnecessary friction. Uh, our goal as a foundation is to make our developers successful uh, uh, in the most frictionless way. And so... We, early in 2017, we uh, developed this concept and this idea of the open developer platform, i.e. a end-to-end CI-CD tooling uh, that not only, you know, takes off the burden of uh, uh, sort of the setup 
and end-to-end -end up to sort of releasing to mainstream repositories uh, of the developer uh, uh, and so provides added value. But also we did it in, with an eye on can these developers actually access the platform? Is it compliant? How can we help them to uh, make sure they actually can commit ultimately to a public GitHub with their own GitHub ID, not only fostering the goals of their firm, but also their individual profile. Um, and of course, as we join the Linux Foundation, we're looking more and more to add uh, uh, tooling and you know, advanced uh, uh, support for our developers. Um, if you're interested, you know, this is a community-led project. Check out odp.finance.org. We'd love to have your thoughts. I know that uh, this community has, you know, a lot of experience in managing uh, the developer workflow of open source projects. And then last but not least, we are very proud about our uh, open source readiness program. Um, the first two years of our life have been focused on making sure that banks and financial institutions could move from consumption, you know, make no mistake, financial institutions have been consuming open source for the longest time, uh, but to move uh, to actually open source contribution. Um, we do have a bi-weekly open source readiness meeting that has guest speakers, but also that brings together peers in the industry, whether they are legal, uh, you know, developers, uh, or even, you know, uh, technical decision makers. This group really created uh, a momentum for many of these firms to uh, have their open source contribution policy, having their technology tool chain uh, ready and, uh, 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 you know, streamlined enough for developers to contribute from their own laptop, sorry, from their corporate laptop into an open source repository. Most of these firms have now a CLA with Finos, which again, in some cases took months, if not years to get signed. But once it's there, it provides a, a framework for the whole firm to again, contribute at least in Finos as a trusted entity. Not only that, but we also provided, uh, uh, you know, business strategic level uh, um, advocacy. So if you are in a financial institution and you are looking, you really would love to contribute to open source, you think it makes sense, we can help. Uh, whether you're a member or just a contributor, uh, we can, uh, you know, work with you. It is part of our mission to help uh, developers in financial institutions being able to partake to open source communities. And that has allowed us, you know, uh, to really, uh, uh, you know, address a couple of um, sort of archetypes of collaboration. Um, you know, we talked about legend. Uh, that is your typical, if you want, maybe the, the most, the type of open sourcing that you're most accustomed to. Um, it's a production piece of software. It is very high value uh, uh, um, components. It is originated from one firm, in this case, Goldman Sachs. And Finos not only helps once the project is open sourced uh, to grow it, you know, there's, it doesn't just take throwing a project on GitHub, as you know, to make it successful, um, but also has helped uh, Goldman Sachs as a platinum member to get there to uh, uh, what we call contribution fitness and contribution readiness. Um, but certainly the, you know, there is an existing internal proprietary project that gets open sourced. It's something that, you know, we see are seeing more and more uh, in this industry. Um, completely other side of the spectrum. Uh, starting from the problem rather than the solution. Um, security reference is a huge problem in the industry. There is no uh, standardized data there. Uh, uh, each of the firms has to spend huge amounts of money to cleanse the data. And so starting from a problem 
we were able to put together an effort uh, both led by Nomura, but with participation from several other vendors, buy side firms, uh, to really go after the problem, whether that means creating an open standard or an open source uh, uh, component that can help mapping security reference. Again, I wanted to share that with you because we have reached a level of trust in our community that allow us to, you know, not only start from a piece of technology, but also start from an industry-wide problem and, you know, leverage the open way to go after it, to, to define solutions for it. And finally, last but not least, uh, Morpher, uh, open source, a very cool technology that was open sourced by Morgan Stanley a couple of months ago. Um, this was already an open source project, but as we said before, uh, it doesn't just take throwing it on GitHub. Uh, to, to make a project successful. And so Morgan Stanley decided to contribute Morpher uh, to Finos, uh, you know, for a couple of reasons. Once, we all know that, you know, when a software is under a foundation, uh, you know, it typically uh, uh, sort of addresses some of the objections that both corporate and individual contributors have to contribute in a a corporate GitHub organization, even if it's open source, uh, you know, when it's under a foundation, there's of course that element of collective ownership and uh, transparent governance that encourages uh, new contributors. And you know, the second reason, as you learn a little bit later, is that we're working a lot with uh, regulators, and you know, Morphin has a huge potential. Um, to become the project that can be used to standardize business logic around regulatory, certain regulatory use cases. So again, just to give you an idea of why projects, uh, why we think projects come into Finos and how we've helped this industry uh, making inroads. Last but not least, uh, uh, as I mentioned, we joined the Linux Foundation earlier in the year, and this has been uh, an amazing experience for us so far. Uh, we are absolutely thankful of uh, having, you know, a broader umbrella supporting us. And, and again, open source is about joining communities. It's not about fragmenting, uh, you know, a community that is still relatively nascent. So we're very excited about it. And in terms of the how this helps uh, all of you, um, you know, we already have a strong presence in, in Europe and in the UK. And, personal Italian, even though I'm based in San Francisco. Um, but we are looking to expand more and more uh, globally. Uh, the, the financial uh, technology and the financial ecosystem is global by definition. And so uh, not only global expansion, but you know the massive training and certification infrastructure that DLF provide, you can expect more training and more certification from us next year. Events, uh, not only today, but uh, you'll hear it in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're organizing our flagship conference with the Linux Foundation and joining forces there, you know, and their massive experience has been, has been a huge lift for us. And of course, finally improving upstream. Um, you know, I'm very proud of what we were able to achieve in terms of having banks contribute uh, to open source projects. Um, and so, bringing this to upstream communities and our sister foundations is certainly a huge target for us. Um, first and foremost, uh, as I mentioned, an example of how DLF and Finos are coming together is our open source strategy forum, which is going virtual in uh, two weeks from now, a little over two weeks from now. Uh, it will be hosted on 12th and 13th of November. This is a great way for you to learn about the Finos community. Uh, um, and, you know, it's been an event that historically has created so much energy and so much momentum around our community that I hope you'll be able to join us. Finally, uh, moving to the what. Uh, and, and I'm going to be trying to leave some, uh, some time uh, there for us to chat. Uh, but, you know, if you think, where does Finos operate? What kind of projects that are in there? Well, think about the financial services stack. It used to be a largely proprietary stack with sort of open source sprinkled in there. Again, don't let anyone fool you. 
financial services, financial services has been using open source for the longest time. But if you break it down, then you realize that there is a whole section of sort of general purpose platform and infrastructure that typically is under the Linux Foundation. Think about Linux, Kubernetes, Node, and so many of these projects under our sister foundation. But there is a huge amount of projects that are simply specific to financial service. And that's where we play. A um, couple of examples. We talked about Legend. Uh, we're very excited about this project. Go check it out. It is an incubating stage. It's a data modeling language. It's used in production by Goldman Sachs. It really runs the whole data strategy uh, at Goldman Sachs. So just fresh off the press, open source last week, uh, certainly an area where your engagement and your contribution uh, could be useful for us and could be useful for you. Um, Perspective, open sourced by JP Morgan uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, it's now an active project of Finos since it has contributions and adoption from several firms. Uh, it is a data streaming visualization library built, built in WebAssembly. Uh, you know, it is a very mature open source project, uh, again, used in production by several institutions. Uh, make sure you check it out. Um, as you can see, the sample of our project is pretty uh, broad. Uh, you know, cloud service certification is another example. Um, the whole industry is going through uh, the cloud journey, and you know, regulated industries have specific constraints. And so, this is a project that allows us actually to mutualize not only implementation of some of these controls when it comes to do cloud deployments, but also the interpretation of those controls, which, again, when you look at the regulatory world, is a huge expense. Um, so a data platform, a visualization framework, a policy controls uh, framework, and finally, our most successful open standard, FDC3, the Financial Desktop Collaboration and Connectivity Consortium, uh, has now reached uh, is 1.1 version. Uh, it is a very mature standard that enables interoperability between traders and desktop applications. Make sure you check it out. Again, everyone is welcome uh, to contribute and participate. So we'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm not going to go into every project, but make sure that you check out the slides after uh, the talk. I want to leave a couple of minutes for questions. We have so many projects, over 40, uh, and several of them are around data. Um, you know, as you can imagine, a great place to start when you're collaborating on a, you know, changing an ecosystem is data. Um, I quickly touched on that, but it's something that I wanted to call out. Uh, we have launched our open reg tech initiative, um, whose goal is to really bring together regulators, financial institutions, and position open source uh, as the way that uh, some of these very complex problems, I mean, if you think about data privacy, if you think about KYC or AML, if you think about uh, uh, even financial inclusion. These are huge problems at the crossroads of technology and policy. And candidly, are problems that no regulator and no financial institution in isolation can solve. Uh, so we all know here in this community how open source has proven to be a great tool to solve not just technology problems, but again, problems that go beyond anyone's scope uh, in terms of being able to solve them in isolation. And so we have seen some really early uh, uh, successes with this initiative, uh, including partnerships, uh, including a SIG, special interest group that just got created. So make sure you uh, uh, check this out because we think this is a great opportunity, uh, not only to go after problems that are, you know, very high impact, uh, in this industry and beyond, but also because we have, you know, Morpher, Legend, Walls contributed by Deutsche Bank. We have concrete projects that actually could be served and could be used to solve some of these uh, very compelling uh, regulatory use cases. Um, and finally, I mean, I think we all could use more transparency and open source 
as far as is applied to regulation, can bring a lot of transparency. So uh, we hope uh, you'll be interested enough to be engaged. Um, I mentioned a cloud service certification. I just wanted to bring it up again, just to say that we think open source goes way beyond code. Uh, we think open source can be used to neutralize interpretation, uh, implementation, and ideally enforcement from the regulators. Uh, imagine when the scenario in which there is one way to you know, build infrastructure as code and spin up an infrastructure that is regulatory compliant when it comes to these institutions moving their workloads to cloud. Uh, and the, actually the tests are published in the open uh, for public accountability. Well, that's the goal that our cloud service certification project has. And I think there's a huge room, again, for many experts like you uh, to do so. Um, so trying to go into to a wrap here. Um, how can you actually help? If you're interested, of course, um, check out our landscape. Uh, I posted the link to our good first issues across our 40 plus projects. That's a great place to start. Uh, we have a community mailing list and a community GitHub repo where you can just subscribe, send your ideas, or even raise new ideas for contributions as an issue in the GitHub repo. Uh, and finally, as I said, open source is way beyond code. Uh, we could and we'd love to hear from you in terms of helping us spreading the message by blogging on our platform, uh, by helping us mentor an incubating project when it comes to this project being successful in the open. Uh, but before I wrap, I just wanted to say, why should you care? Um, you know, I, I, I would love to have you collaborate with us, but why would you? Well, look, if you look at the road ahead, um, there is a major opportunity for a commercial ecosystem around open source in fintech. This is still very early days, and we've seen in so many other industries, um, you know, a commercial open, open source ecosystem can help fuel uh, the development of our community. And so if you are in a tech or fintech startup, this is a huge opportunity for you. Um, we're looking to go for higher order challenges, as I've said before, in 2021. Now that we have this organic momentum and opportunity, we're going to be looking at what can we do as a very influential community um, to solve some of these long-standing problems in the industry and beyond. Um, you know, we're looking at open sourcing and making our project successful. Throwing open source code out there doesn't mean making it successful. So your help and your mentorship would be invaluable as open source experts for a community that is still relatively young. And then finally, again, just to wrap it, uh, we are looking to collaborate beyond our core community, where it means geographically or with other initiatives of individual contributors that are new to the industry. This is a very exciting moment for us and we, we hope you'll participate. And so just to wrap, why should you care? Um, you know, you can help us accelerate the creation of a truly open financial ecosystem, which is not only going to help this ecosystem, but it's going to potentially impact, you know, uh, uh, have domino effects way beyond technology and into people's lives. And of course, you can be uh, a leader. You know, there is a first mover advantage here. So as I wrap, Two weeks from now, join our Open Source Strategy Forum. But before that, on Thursday, we have a three hours mini summit on Finos with speakers from our key projects and members, as well as our COO, Tosha Ellison, and our uh, uh, Director of Community, James McLeod. So I hope uh, uh, at 1 p.m. Uh, Central European time on Thursday, you'll be able to join us for this three hours mini summit. And with that, I wanted to check with you if there are questions out there. There's, a, there's one question that I can take, which is, is there any need for open source hardware within the finance industry? Uh, I think it's a really good question. Um, we have been more focused on software 
uh, over our sort of brief history, uh, but we think that there certainly is opportunities for hardware. We, uh, uh, you know, are in actually conversations with several uh, hardware vendors out there. I think, you know, for our footprint, from where we come from in investment banking, I think uh, there certainly is, you know, very specific hardware that gets built for, you know, the trading departments and investment banking arms of these institutions. Um, you know, if you ask me, there's always a huge opportunity to standardize, despite of, you know, optimized implementations, to standardize APIs and primitives uh, that would allow, again, to create an open ecosystem also on the hardware side. Uh, I th so long story short, I think, yes, there is a huge potential, but it certainly not has been our first, uh, 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 you know, focus over the next uh, uh, sort of quarter or so. And with that, I know I am a couple of minutes over time. There are no more questions. I will, I want to thank you all for attending and uh, uh, I hope you'll be able to join us on Thursday again at 1 p.m. CET for our mini summit. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Have a good day.